Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Minus, and I'd like to thank you for choosing me for your orthopedic care. I know there are a lot of uh, choices out there, but I think that I'll give you a personalized touch and uh, listen to your uh, questions, concerns, and try to get you where you need to be. I've uh, been in practice now for 30 years. Uh, most of that time has been at uh, the Harvard Medical School in Boston, Mass, where I was an attending orthopedic surgeon uh, and a professor of orthopedic surgery uh, at the Brigham Women's Hospital. Uh, my background has been extensive. Uh, my initial focus was uh, managing young people uh, who underwent uh, trauma, and I would reconstruct their lower extremities after traumatic experiences. This led me into uh, trying to figure out how we can uh, maintain people with a high functional activity uh, who are young and injured who had our arthritis at an early age. And so this led me to uh, continue in joint replacement uh, fellowship and an epidemiology degree at the Harvard School of Public Health to set up and design clinical studies. Uh, with that, uh, my big interest being young arthritics, um, I was the first person in the United States to do cartilage cell transplantation uh, in 1995, and I brought that cartilage repair technique from Sweden, Gothenburg. Uh, this was exciting. It was innovative. Uh, and once we started having excellent clinical outcomes with our patients, we wanted to see how we could determine uh, whether uh, these patients uh, truly were repairing their, their knee joints after cartilage transplant. Uh, and we uh, found a way to uniquely identify that with three-dimensional MRI scan. Uh, I became uh, good friends and a colleague with Dr. Philip Lang, who uh, did this research with me. And uh, we started talking about three-dimensional imaging for cartilage repair, uh, but realized putting that through the FDA would be very difficult. And so we thought, well, how about metal and plastic? And so that's how the whole idea of imaging therapeutics and Conformis was founded, and this was around 2001. So uh, with that, I became one of the design surgeons for this new uh, image to implant technology, uh, which started in 2001. And from this, we developed uh, partial knee replacements uh, for a single compartment, for two compartments, uh, which was unique and only done by this uh, particular uh, development and then finally total knee replacements, which uh, of course is well known to the uh, orthopedic community, but uh, we did it differently. Uh, the way we did it differently was we decided that we would uh, make a anatomical implant that matches the knee of the patient individually and precisely uh, as the knee is an asymmetric structure. We would develop the knee the way uh, it was and not put in an off-the-shelf implant, which is a symmetric implant. So with an off-the-shelf implant, you have to balance the soft tissues and cut the bone to the implant, which makes it technically tricky. Or you can put in an anatomic implant where the balancing and soft tissue release is minimal and you still have a nice straight leg when you're all done. So my philosophy for care of a patient is to individualize treatment. So if all you know how to do is a total knee replacement, that's probably all you're going to offer a patient. You'll offer them what I call palliative care, which is uh, send them to physical therapy, do injections on their knee, maybe an arthroscopy, and then eventually they go on to total knee replacement. And that's sort of the standard by which most patients are treated. Uh, the unfortunate thing is if you're in your 20s or 30s or 40s and you have this problem, you have to wait a long time before somebody says, I'm going to do your knee replacement, get rid of your pain, get rid of your disability. So my philosophy has always been to understand uh, every surgical opportunity for a patient to reconstruct their knee, even if they're in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, or 60s. And so my philosophy has always been Okay, if you have lots of arrows in your quiver, you can treat a patient based on their needs and their demands and get them back to what they want in life. So typically for me, uh, my, my practice has been focused on biologic reconstruction. So 
if I have a patient in their 20s and they've blown up their ACL and they've had their meniscus taken out, now they have some articular cartilage damage, what I do is reconstruct the knee back to where it was before. So we always look at the source and cause and treat that cause. So if the ACL is out and there's cartilage damage and a meniscus gone, we fix everything as one surgical sitting. We reconstruct the articular cartilage with chondrocyte transplantation, meniscus with a meniscus allograft, an ACL with an ACL reconstruction. That's done as one operation. Um, what if it gets worse? Say, say you catch somebody uh, 15 years down the line. Well, then if they're bow-legged or knock-kneed uh, and they're bone-on-bone, -bone, then they're either a candidate for an osteotomy or a partial replacement, depending on their needs and the wants of that person. So once they understand uh, what's involved and the risks and benefits, it's a joint decision. I give you the information and the risks and the benefits, and we participate in a combined decision as to what is best for you. And so um, that is the philosophy that I go by. Uh, looking at it another way, um, uh, most total knees are done in Medicare patients, uh, 65 and older. My practice, 1% is Medicare. So all my patients, even my total knees, um, are younger. They're all young arthritics and everybody's abandoning these patients and saying there's nothing to be done for you except for a total knee replacement but you're too young so i can't do it well i have a different philosophy and especially the conformis implants allow me to do that because they remove so little bone and preserve ligaments that i can do partial replacements or even their total knee replacement takes about 40 percent less bone it is anatomic and if that wears out, I can still do a standard off-the-shelf implant in the future. So I don't burn bridges, and I look to quality of life for patients and activity for patients. So typically, the person who seeks my expertise has been a younger patient, uh, usually an ex-athlete um, or still a recreational weekend warrior uh, who has a young family, is in the middle of their uh, career, is super busy, but is disabled and unable to participate in sporting activities. Uh, so they've often been multiply operated upon and they think there's no hope for the knee. So the average number of surgeries per knee for my patients is three per knee before they come to see me. Uh, every now and then I have somebody who just comes in with what I call a virgin knee. They've had an injury or they just have primary osteoarthritis. They've seen other doctors and they're looking for other answers. Uh, and that's my typical patient. So if you're coming to see me for the first time, um, and you've already been treated uh, with past surgery uh, that has been unsuccessful, what's useful for me to know is, if possible, to bring all your previous studies, recent studies, recent weight-bearing x-rays, recent MRI scans of your knee, and recent operative notes or arthroscopy photos. Those are very helpful because then I don't have to uh, go over it and repeat all those image studies. Now, if you haven't had them, or you've misplaced them or they're lost, that's, that's fine. No, no, don't worry, we can, we can get what we need to do. Um, but that background information is very helpful so that we can do a uh, accurate and clear diagnosis and uh, decide on what's the best for you.